When is the first time you met Brutus the Barber Beefcake? Because obviously he first, just had the Dark Side of the Ring episode. Yeah, first time I met him when, was, uh, when I first started in Louisiana. And we met a town together. Uh, so, yeah, it was 1979. What did you think about him? Nice guy. Uh, Ed, his name was Ed Boulders back then, I think. It was uh, or Ed Hogan, Ed Dizzy Hogan. Dizzy Ed Hogan, whatever it was. It wasn't Beefcake. But yeah, he it was. was a, I think it was Eddie Boulder at one point. Then he was Dizzy Hogan. Yeah. yeah I think he was talking he, about how yeah. Funk basically was like, man, you're like a, uh, a like a dim-witted uh, valley girl from California, like Dizzy or whatever. So then they started calling him Dizzy Hogan. Right. Hogan's yeah, little so, brother, quote-unquote, yeah. Yeah, that's where I met him. So, nice guy. Was he with the Hulkster? I'm guessing he was with the Hulkster at that point. No, he's in Louisiana. Oh, and, boy. Uh, no Hulkster, okay. No Hulkster. I did hear about the cocaine incident. It was at the uh, toll, toll bridge, right? No, it was at the train station. Train station, okay. Well, I remember Anthrax was like a big scare at that point. God, this had to been 13 years ago or so, but it was like a, a big scare, maybe even longer than that, but it was a so big scare at the time. Yeah, so the British just kind of go, oops, uh, hey guys, that was me. Basically, the... Did. The person that relieved him found it, thought it was anthrax. Then they realized, check the tape, it was him. He dropped something out of his pocket. It was a little baggy. Now, it's funny. Him and his wife on the documentary were saying that it was aspirin in a little bag. <laughs> but sure. Greg Valentine goes, it was obviously cocaine, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's okay to stick to your story to a certain point. But, uh, yeah, so they saw him drop it on, on the film was how they caught it. It's how they found out. Yep. So I guess well, and so, so basically, the girl that relieved him were like, "Oh my God, it's anthrax! Who who did this? What happened?" And I guess they checked it out, and it was him dropping the uh, the cocaine, dropping the snake, but he never even knew it. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. So, Ibsen says, "Do you or anybody know uh, why that wherever Hogan went and had a spot in any federation, that Beefcake also has a spot in the company?" He's saying Brut Brutus, meaning Brutus, always had a spot in that company as well. Well, yeah, it's because Hogan was friends. He could get his friends in the territory. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. Obviously, uh, Hogan carried a lot of weight, right? Yeah. I mean, politically, he could get the guy in. Sure. But, yeah, he went through so many damn gimmicks in WCW that definitely dropped the ball. Yeah, I could see why. Nobody can get behind those gimmicks. I mean, he didn't know what he was going to be the next week, and – yeah, just he wouldn't. He probably wasn't in too many meaningful angles either. Not really, no. No. And like the booty man is just a terrible gimmick. I don't even know what the heck they're thinking about with that. I mean, is you know, it a rib? The booty man. You know. It seems like a bit of a rib. Hey, they don't rib and they don't want to be ribbed. <laughs> they would never name anybody anything like uh, Vincent or. Things like that. Barbara saying, Brutus is a nice fellow. Would you say he was a great worker? Uh, I would say he was a good performer. Not not worker, work rate, and ring. You wouldn't say great? I would say a good performer. I would. I would say he got he had charisma. He was he was I thought he did a pretty good job as Brutus V Cake. Yeah, I mean he was over in WBF for what? Nine huh. years, basically. I mean, it's pretty, pretty yeah. impressive. That's pretty impressive. Definitely. That's the main events with Hogan, too. Yeah. So, I guess some great workers getting in that spot and doing that stuff. Then, yeah, I'd say he's a great worker. I, I thought it was a hell. I thought it was a hell of a performer. I, did. I feel like I liked him with the Dream Team with. Greg Valentine, because obviously Valentine's the great worker, and he's he's got the look, but they work well together. Then when he became the barber, it was great because, you know, he got over cutting these guys' hair, put them to sleep, and then cutting their hair. Right. Yeah. So he made he made good with what he had. Did you meet Beefer in WBF in 93 when he was there and you came in? Yeah, I saw him when he was there, but I met him, like I said, in 79. What did you think about him in 93? Because obviously he's got the uh, the new face, the reconstructed face. Didn't think anything different of him. I'm not sure feel, like, I huh? feel like he slowed down as a worker, though, at that point. No, 
I think he did just what he needed to do as a worker at that point. Bruce was still on top. Yeah. Yep. The hospital photos from Jason is saying the hospital photos they showed after the accident were brutal. Capital B, brutal. I'm surprised they showed them that detail. Yeah, they actually showed the photos from the from the doctor from the power sailing accident. It's pretty gross. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to see that. And they explained like what they had to do and like rip his face basically because his face was caved in. They had to like rip his face, put the titanium rods in, and then put it back. Yeah, it was ouch. Yeah, and then then uh, when Hogan's taking him out of the room, you know he's trying to like lift his spear to get him out of the room. His eyes like coming out of its socket. They had to put. His oh, eye back. yeah. Oh, yeah. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Pretty crazy. Crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. The doctor was saying, I'm surprised he lived. And he was saying, he's surprised he could breathe. And he was surprised he could see. And then all of a sudden, you know, le- much later, about two or three years later, he was actually wrestling again. So the doctor was uh, pretty uh, pretty remarkable. Yeah, that is pretty remarkable. That's, that's just, uh, can't imagine. Don't want to imagine. Donnie's saying there's so many mixed stories about Hogan. It seemed like in that uh, documentary, though, it seemed like there's pretty positive about Hogan. I would think so. Uh, Jason's saying, I can tell Bischoff did not like Brutus Beefcake from his interviews. Well, that could be true. He said, basically, it was the Hulk Hogan tax, and that means you have to pay Brutus to be on the roster. <laughs> could, that could be it. That, that could be it 100%. He laughed about it, but he said basically, uh, Hogan well, he was ribbing on the square, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he said not that Hogan would demand it, but he wouldn't even say it, but you knew that you had yeah. to do it, yeah, right. Um, Ibsen, did Vince at all ask for him during the attitude era? Was Beefcake on Vince's mind to bring him back? I have no idea, I have no idea it was on Vince's mind. I can't see him fitting into the Attitude Era. Beefer. Yeah. Scorch, if not for their injuries, I believe that Brutus Beefcake and Kurt Hennig would have been contenders for the world title, especially since Hogan kept leaving to star in movies. That's from Scorch. What do you think about that? I think that's a good possibility. 1990, where did men shop for yellow zebra striped tights with fishnet sides? Wow, that is a good question. Well, they they had them uh, custom made. You know what I mean? Any self-respecting barber would uh, have them custom made. That is a great question because Beefcake had all those weird tights. And it's like, where yes, the hell is he getting this stuff from? My God. Well, at that time, they had great... Uh, seamstress? Seamstresses, yes. Sure did. Donnie says, how many bridges got burned because of his wife, meaning Beefcake? I heard another wrestler mention his wife before what do you think about that i don't know if you ever met her knew her or anything i've never i've never met his wife so i really don't know anything about her she was kind of saying on the documentary and i guess brutus said, oh she gets uh, the wrong reputation and things like that but greg valentine was saying she's not not nice and hogan was saying she's not nice and she's too much and but basically, Valentine, who was like his best buddy, and obviously Hogan's has been his best friend since childhood, they're not friends with him anymore. And a lot of people think it's because of the wife. Well, that could have, that, that certainly could be a real reason. The modern day cowboy himself, Mitch Miller, the barber shop was a great segment for interviews. We'll always remember the Rockers breakup on the barber shop. Yeah, that kind of gave Beefcake something to do. And that was cool. When the Rockers broke up, went through a pain glass window that was supposed to be uh, gimmicked. Yep. Still got cut up. So. That was pretty awesome, though, if you think about it. Yeah. It was. And they they play that nonstop for, you know, 30 years. That happened in 90, what, 92? Pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, I thought it was awesome. I love it. Oh. <laughs> the Barber. Was a great gimmick. Yes, definitely agree. Frank Nordquist, Brutus Beefcake, broke Kurt Hennig's perfect streak when that perfect streak, excuse me, when that happened, he was over with the fans like never before. He was over for sure. Yeah. Well, 
And then he did it right. Cutting and strutting. Perfect was absolutely hated. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if, if you're to your point, I guess if somebody needs it, then they could break somebody's undefeated streak because it helps elevate them. Hogan didn't need anything. He was you yeah. know, the, the god of wrestling at that point, so he didn't really need to necessarily end the perfect streak. Yeah, so uh, it might have been Hogan's idea. Who knows? Let's start that rumor. It was Hogan's idea. Yes, to get Brutus over. Yeah, yeah there you go. There you go. 100% Hogan's idea. I agree. Yeah. Brutus Beefcake's interest music was catchy. Yes, very catchy. Yes. Yeah. Like Very if you cool. got that good entrance music and you have that, you know, that great look, obviously Beefcake had a great look. You're, you know, you're in like Flynn. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're going to, you're halfway there basically. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, when did Brutus or when Brutus went into the hall of fame, was that a head scratcher to you? No, no. Beefcake, uh, Beefcake was part of that, that again, WWF when it, it was characters and people were popular and, Pop culture was happening all around it, and uh, no, he was he was part of that, so wouldn't hit scratcher at all. In one interview, Brutus recounts the backup plan for what to do if Zeus forgot his spots during the match. Uh, during his matches, all things considered, Zeus, Zeus worked pretty well for a guy who was so green. Yeah, so that that's that that only makes sense to have a backup plan because you just never know. Do you agree that Zeus was good? Or, or you know, considering... Yeah, for a guy who was that green, yeah, of course. First time I heard anything negative about Brutus was from the Something to Wrestle podcast. That's from the Ragu Overlord. Have you ever heard of Something to Wrestle? Do you know what that is? Um, uh, Isn't that a vase that you put on your desk? It is Something to Wrestle podcast. Oh, I thought that was your brother. Oh, that's it. Oh. That's the one. Right. Yeah. He Water. had... A, he had a lot of bad things for some reason to say. Him and Connie don't like Brutus or didn't like Brutus. Well, we have a different relationship. 